you guys are doing a fantastic job of feeding into my next question. It's <laughs> like I told them the questions in advance. Um, are you guys familiar with uh, with the Chernin Group's new new show, Summer Break? Anybody in here? Show of hands, Summer Break. You read the Wall Street Journal this morning? Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, this is a really interesting show, I'll just fill you guys in. Um, instead of being on one specific platform and going to one place at one time, you follow the characters on Summer Break through their social interactions with each other. So you check them out on Twitter and on Vine and on Facebook and on Tumblr and on Instagram, and you learn the story of what they're doing through their social media interactions with each other. So it's a, it's a, um, a show that is being produced by a major company that's done huge traditional television and film uh, productions, but they're trying something strictly on mobile and strictly the way that they feel like the next generation is going to consume. And there's a few examples of that around that people probably go to Defiance on the sci-fi network as well, which is originally launched as a, as a game uh, with a strong social media interaction and with, with the, the, the premise that um, the, the reaction to the game, the reaction via social media will influence the way that the story develops um, and is portrayed on the, on the TV show, um, which, is, which follows and, and is promised to be interactive. Now, critical reviews haven't been all that, uh, <laughs> all, all that great, but the, the, the premise is, is interesting. What I'd like to know is, is there um, a bystander way of, of watching what's happening? Meaning that if you're dealing with multiple markets, multiple uh, platforms, in the, in the sense of, of uh, Facebook or Twitter or just everybody that's telling part of the story, is there a way for people who don't have that much time to be able to come back and watch the show or get the, the qualities that are being presented in each part? Is that going to be the disc release? And since discs are going away in general, it seems, is there going to be a way that even in the future, if you love the show, how are you going to archive all of information and present it? Is there going to be a final version that just has all of the information presented? I get excited about looking at every project from where you're going with marketing and getting the stories out there, but also to what's the best experience once you're finished? Because that's a piece of your history that you put on the shelf that you know, should have everything, and that's where I enjoy just digging into it sometimes after the fact. It's the same thing about the, uh, watching uh, television series. I enjoy especially a series like 24, where so much happens that I don't want to wait for the next episode, so I'll wait till the series is over, just to watch it through. And uh, even though 24 hours tends to run faster without commercials. <laughs> but. Um, when we talk about projects like this, I'm excited about it, but I can't see in my life having the time to watch them through. But I'd like to see that. I don't, I don't think you're the audience they're going after on this one. I get that, but I'm thinking that, that if, as a producer from that perspective, I'd like to see how I could capture me as an audience member as well after the fact and packaging it and getting all of that out yeah. there. And I would think that so much would be lost. Yeah, I mean, I believe they're going to be doing a, a, a final wrap up where you can see everything, and I imagine there'll be a second window. Uh, after their sort of original uh, air dates or, or following or whatever they're going to call it now. I guess it's not an air date where they'll have a reunion show or something like that that ties it all together. But uh, interesting just to see how it all plays out. And uh, no, not having seen it, I also wonder how do you know where to go next. And, would, and if you missed one thing, do you suddenly find that you're lost? Yeah. Is well, not, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I guess these are the questions they you got to ask and find out. It, it also sort of you know, comes around to a sort of interesting trend and perhaps a, a, a slightly frustrating trend from a content creation point of view, which is um, the way entertainment is, is being consumed um, is, is also in a distracted mode. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, you know, trends towards multitasking, so that if, if people are watching TV or whatever, they're also you know, playing with their with their tablet, um, and there's there's been some interesting initiatives of trying to uh, you know, create content that is both you know on one screen and delivering uh, complementary content. 
and I, I think there's going to be a lot, lot more um, efforts along those lines to try and capture the attention uh, of people in a, in a comprehensive way. I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, we, we talked about what Chernin was trying to do, um, and there's so many different things going on in different ways for people to create and try and make money. Who, who in your guys' opinion, are the innovators right now? Who's, who's really doing it the best? It's a confusing market out there. I don't know where I would say who's doing it the best because you have um, who's the, you know you have crowd. You have the, we're just talking about crowdsourcing. You have people like Veronica Mars going and making millions of dollars, and then you have uh, Zach Braff coming out and saying that he's going to do a, a do a movie without with money that he doesn't need. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that hurt that market. Um, but who's doing it well? I mean, you also have to look at the look at that side of it as uh, are you asking the question of who's doing it the best for the consumer, or who's doing it best for themselves? The crowdfunding. I mean, when we were doing our crowdfunding of, of the Star Wolf, the point was to raise money and be able to turn it around and not have studios direct us on what we could and could not do, and it was going to be a great challenge to get the money to go to the next episode, the next episode. But when you have somebody like Zach Brandt, who already is a millionaire and has and is going to bring in money, it's practically free money for him to do the show. For him, that's he's doing it best. He's able to get investors who he doesn't have to pay back. Uh, Veronica Mars, I'm surprised that uh, they took so much money to sell t-shirts. And to get all that money forward to, to, to greenlight the movie, that um, my understanding is it was going to be greenlit anyway, but they were able to get the press from it and be able to have that move forward. But that was, again, more money for them to be able to produce the project, so they were doing it very well. Who's doing it best in the media? Um, I mean, I'm still looking at the distribution model, which is, I still think iTunes is doing a, a great job. Uh, I think Netflix is coming up. I know Google Play is trying, but they're not quite where where iTunes is, um, but those are the ones that pop to mind right away. I know there's a lot of second players that are trying to come in, but I don't see them as uh, as successful as iTunes is going with uh, the Apple TV and, and, and as you say, every every uh, uh, device that's out there. I just would like to see them break down the barrier for Android and let those let Android devices watch iTunes. And but that's, I don't know if that really answers your question about who's doing it best in the media. Oh, so that, was a, that was a very eloquent answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't really add to that. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think it's very much in a sort of transition phase in terms of uh, in terms of media at the moment, and it's, it's not clear who who the, the ultimate winners will be. Um, I think it will be whoever delivers the best overall experience for for the consumer. But, but that that's definitely unclear at this point. Yeah, as we were saying, it, overall, we don't want to have to figure it out as an audience member. We really don't want to have to think about who's doing the best job. What we want is to be able to have great programming, to be able to sit down and watch great programming. And when we get home, if there's a, I, I actually see the end of networks coming in the future. And people are saying that, well, that's terrible, and that the networks will always be there because Wednesday night is always the time that I want to come back and watch watch Survivor, and I want to be able to be able to watch it with my friends. And I said, that's not going to change. It's just when you get home, you get to choose when you're going to watch it. And they're talking about well, ad revenues are issues. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'd probably pay a uh, dollar an episode of my new show just to watch it without commercials, to know that I could do that. And the moral is, is when I get home, I want everything I want to watch. They're waiting for me. I don't want to have to go through 15 different companies to find out uh, what's best because they're all competing for my my uh, uh, my dollars and competing for my attention. The answer is whoever makes it universal, right there for you, and has all the content that you want. That's the one, that's the company that's going to win, and that's what you can say. Thank you.
So now that, that studios and large companies and all the major agencies are sort of paying attention to digital and uh, YouTube celebrities and they're creating shows like Burning Love with Ben Stiller that, that will premiere on um, Yahoo and they'll cut it into five minute episodes and, and get a bunch of sponsors and, and cover the budget before they even go to production. What does that What does that really mean? I mean, it, it was the Wild West, and now all of a sudden, public good trading companies are are spending time and money and trying to buy up uh, YouTube creators. What What does that mean for the space? Is it Is it already gone? Is, do we have to figure out something else? It still seems to me like they're still shooting in the dark. That there really is no model that uh, that has proven itself. But at least the attention has been grabbed. That, that Yahoo's willing to do it, and that, that YouTube's launching their channels, and that even, you know, you, we were talking about the new markets of uh, Xbox, trying, as we said before, Xbox trying to sell a, a piece of hardware, selling a, ser a series. Everyone's shooting in the dark. They're waiting for something that's going to stick to the model that YouTube created, which is uh, free content and content that's going to get that attention. And with it, you know, anytime you love something, someone comes up with a way to monetize it so we now have our commercials before we can watch it on YouTube. So everyone's trying to work out what the new model is. And what's wonderful is, is that they're trying to work out what the new model is. So there is money out there for, for projects. The question is, what is going to stick and what is going to be the format that everybody wants to work with or succeed with? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I, I think it's it's going to take some time to, to, to work through this. Um, and and yeah, we may not end up with a single model. I, I think we'll uh, you know, potentially end up with, with with a number of models, probably a couple of predom predominant ones. But um, again, as, as the, the number of platforms increase, I, I think people are going to try different things. And that's that's not bad. I think there will be a, you know, a, there is the potential for you know, broadening the overall the overall market, and from from those of us that are producing content, um, I, yeah, I think it's also it will be uh, we, we should continually look at, at at ways and different ideas of, of, of monetizing that content because I think there's going to be a, a lot of creativity in that field as well. Uh, there's going to be continue to be all sorts of different ways to, to look at, at monetizing content and you know, just beyond the traditional forms of, of straight advertising or, or straight subscription or purchase. The model that I think is going to make the biggest difference and the model that I think people aren't, these companies aren't really looking at is they're trying to direct what the audience wants. It's the same thing that studios do when they, when they look at a, when they have the account and screenwriter production. And I think that as the walls between the audience and the content providers fall more and more, where you sitting there, you can decide what's going to be made next because you actually really have an interest in it, is what's going to be successful. And everyone's going to keep trying to say, well, this worked here on that model. Let's try and throw money in that direction. And that doesn't work. Or sometimes it does, but that's. The point is, is that the more that audiences can directly say, I want to see this, and make a vote for what they want to see, that's what I think is going to be uh, the successful model. And, it's, and it usually would have to be project for project. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited about crowdfunding, but at the same time it's getting a bad rap. Because when you get people who are millionaires who can afford to do it themselves, they should, but I do, when we were doing our project, the, the, the important part of it was to make the audience realize that we, we respect them, we call them our lunch group. We said, we want to know what you think, and we want to keep presenting to you more and more so that they have an active participation, and then also stand up and tell people, I was part of something that I helped to create. I think it's the emotional connection, just like a great movie. If you have a great movie, you have a great emotional connection with your audience. You can do that while you're building your project. And if you can get your audience to have that emotional connection, they'll give you the best marketing you can also get, which is word of mouth. They'll say, I was part of this and be proud of it. And say, well, I also have some secrets that I know because I was part of it. And that's where I'd like to see a bigger model for what's going to work.